When the final shadow dropped in December after the Game Awards, it took the gaming community by complete surprise. As someone who had loved what I played in the early test sessions and prior betas, I was incredibly excited. It's been a whirlwind three months for the team at Embark Studios, with the finals gaining a large audience and seeing higher player numbers than they anticipated. While the launch content and early events have been satisfying, many players have been wondering, what's next? Enter Season 2. Season 2 of the finals launches today and brings with it a wide range of substantial additions. We got the chance to enjoy an early play session with the team at Embark, so let's dive into why this update is very promising for the future of the fast-paced FPS. One of the largest additions in Season 2 is a third game mode. Titled Power Shift, it's the first two-team mode featuring two teams of five. Similar in ways to modes like Escort in other titles, but with the action dialed up in typical finals fashion, it's essentially a giant game of explosive tug-of-war. A large moving platform begins at a central location on the map, and teams battle it out to occupy the platform and keep it moving in their favor. Given the variety of gadgets and weaponry available to players, combined with the verticality of the maps, it gets incredibly chaotic battling for the platform in all the best ways. Capitalizing on the unique destruction found in the finals, the platform will also crash through buildings and objects, thus further compounding the chaos. The teams and I had a lot of fun in the few matches of the new mode, because not only is it something completely different than Quick Cash and Bank It, but the two-team approach allows for new strategies and team combinations. Of course, having a team mode also allows you and up to four friends to team up, which is a welcome addition. Alongside Power Shift is a new map as well. The map is named Cis Horizon and runs with the 80s synthwave-themed season. Over the course of several matches, I found it feeling like a solid addition to the map rotation while offering a good mix of close quarter battles and large open pathways to navigate. And just like the other maps, time of day, weather, and effects all randomize. Perhaps the most game-changing additions in Season 2, however, are the new gadgets. The light build gains the gateway, the medium build gains the dematerializer, and the data reshaper, and the heavy build gains the anti-gravity cube. To give you a quick overview directly from Embark on these gadgets, the Gateway for Lights is a pair of limited range deployable portals. When both are thrown and activated, contestants and objects can move between the two locations. Anyone can use a portal, but players cannot see or shoot through them. Picture Wraith from Apex Legends as a good example in this scenario. The Dematerializer for Mediums is a specialization that temporarily erases physical surfaces like walls, ceilings, or goo, allowing contestants to see, shoot, and pass through them. Create new passageways and close them back up again, turn every obstacle into an open door. The Data Reshaper for Mediums is a gadget that changes enemy fortifications, or any random objects for that matter, into something else entirely, like turning an enemy mine into a chair, or an enemy turret into a table. It's great for breaking through enemy defenses. The anti-gravity cube for heavies is a deployable cube that manipulates gravity in its immediate area, lifting contestants and objects upwards. It can be used as a traversal tool, a defensive gadget, or surely in many other ways. While we had limited time with the new gadgets, the dematerializer was already completely game-changing. It enables you to jump through floors, shoot through walls, and utilize the levels in ways you never could before. I can only imagine what players will begin to pull off once the broad community has time with them all. Combining with the new gadgets are a new weapon for each class as well. The lights gain access to the 93R Burst Fire Machine Pistol, the mediums get the FAMAS Burst Fire Assault Rifle, and the heavies get the KS-23 Slug Shotgun. Each plays a unique role for their class, and personally I adored my time with the FAMAS which felt deadly at range, providing you were accurate of course. Season 2 also expands upon the game progression systems. In addition to the new Battle Pass, there's now a contract system that provides you with bonuses over an extended period of time. These are tracked over the course of a season and completed through daily and weekly contracts. It's a more thorough system than what was in place originally and gives players more items to work towards. The League system, or the Ranked Competitive Mode, also sees updates in Season 2. The progression has been revised and there are new rewards that can be gained throughout the season. The final cherry on top for Season 2 is the addition of private matches. This has been a heavily requested feature by the community, so it's great to see Embark getting to it so quickly. It is rather bare bones to start, but Embark has taken the approach of getting it out quickly and then building upon it continually. 
More features and updates are already in active development. Finally, it wouldn't be a new season of a live service game without a new battle pass and cosmetics. The new battle pass is structured similar to the first one with 96 levels of unlockables. As with the rest of the season, it is 80s themed and plays to the theme well with homages in all forms. As part of our preview session, we were able to buy all the new cosmetics and the new pass from the store to play around with. I'll just say this, if you enjoyed customizing your character in the finals already, you're going to love the variety that season two brings. That about wraps it up for what to expect in the final season two. With the new season launching today, you don't have to wait to experience for yourself, so we'll plan to see you on the show.